Hello, welcome to my video on Growth Scan. This is a part of our series called Be Aware, Be Prepared and Be Safe. This is an initiative to enable informed decision making by patients. Growth Scan. It's usually called a well-being scan or a positioning scan. This is usually done when the mother is between 28 to 42 weeks pregnant. This checks how well the baby is growing and the position of the baby in the mother's womb. Why does patient require a growth scan? The mother will be offered a growth or a fetal well-being scan by the referring obstetrician, usually between 28 to 32 weeks of pregnancy. This will show the doctor how the baby is growing. The mother will get another growth scan done and color Doppler studies closer to her due date, which is 36 to 40 weeks of pregnancy. During this scan, the position of the umbilical cord is checked, the amount of amniotic fluid is measured, the position of the placenta and its maturity is visualized, and the baby's position and worth, baby's weight is also determined. And also, the baby's well-being and circulation is noted. What is checked during the scan? During a growth or a well-being scan, the baby's head, abdomen, and thigh bone are measured. The amount of amniotic fluid surrounding the baby is also measured. The baby's activity is visualized during the process of the scan. The measurement of blood flow in the umbilical cord is done using a Doppler ultrasound. And also the position and the maturity of the placenta is observed. If the baby has an average head size but a big abdomen, means that the baby must be getting good food supply from the placenta or due to mother's gestational diabetes, the baby might be big in size. If the baby has an average head size and a smaller abdomen, that may simply indicate that is a small, healthy baby. Occasionally though, this may be a sign that the baby is not growing properly. This scan may also show the amount of amniotic fluid, which is low. But if the baby is smaller than expected, that means the baby will be of low birth weight. To find out why the baby is small, the doctor may perform a Doppler ultrasound scan. The measurements of the head, abdomen and the leg allows the doctor to estimate the fetal weight. All the measurements are plotted on the chart against the normal range and the baby's fetal growth is assessed. Because the babies grow at different rate from week to week, a series of scans can be more helpful than just one scan. Will additional scans be required? The mother might get additional scans in the third trimester if the baby isn't moving as well as, or as often as desired, the baby is in breech, oblique or, or transverse position, the mother is carrying twins or more babies, the umbilical cord was seen around the mother's neck in an earlier scan, or the amount of amniotic fluid is more or less than it should be, or the baby feels smaller or larger than expected for the gestational age of pregnancy. What can third trimester scans detect? The third trimester scan or the fetal well-being scan will look for the following. Your baby's well-being. That is measured by a biophysical profile. A healthy baby can stretch flex his arms or legs, moves his arms or legs frequently, opens and closes the hands, makes breathing movements and gross body movements can also be visualized in the scan. What can't third trimester scans reveal? Whether the dates are right or not. After 20 weeks, babies become more individual in size and shape. If the baby is smaller or bigger than average at 34 weeks, it doesn't mean that the baby is younger or older. Where is the bleeding coming from? Bleeding may be coming from the cervix or further inside the womb. A scan can tell you that the baby is not affected by the bleed, but the scan can rarely see the cause of it. How much the baby weighs? The bigger the baby and near to them, it's more difficult to ascertain the baby's weight. What is fetal growth restriction? Fetal growth restriction is a term used to describe a fetus that is not growing adequately before birth. It is called intrauterine growth restriction. FGR may only become obvious after two to more ultrasounds which have been performed. 
Due to variation in ultrasound measurements, a minimum of two weeks is required between fetal growth scans. Other signs that may indicate FGR are changes in the umbilical cord, blood flow, and reduced amniotic fluid volume. What are the causes of fetal growth restriction? Some of the underlying causes of FGR include placental nutrition insufficiency, fetal abnormality, multiple pregnancy, infection of the mother, for example, cytomegalovirus infection, poor nutrition, smoking, alcohol, or illicit drug abuse, or certain medications taken by the mother during pregnancy, or medical condition affecting the mother, such as diabetes, hypertension, or SLE. How is fetal growth restriction managed? If FGR is suspected, the doctor may recommend certain tests to identify the underlying cause for growth restriction. The test may be offered, which includes an extended ultrasound examination for the baby's structural abnormalities, an amniocentesis to identify if the baby has any chromosomal disorders, a maternal blood test to rule out infection. The pregnancy will be monitored closely with regular ultrasound to measure the ongoing fetal growth, usually every two to four weeks, the umbilical artery blood flow during using a Doppler ultrasound, or other blood flow studies if the umbilical artery shows changes or variations. Growth scan. To summarize, the growth scan takes place when the mother is between 23 and 40 weeks pregnant. It checks how well the baby is growing and its position in the uterus. The scan assesses the baby's well-being through its movements and growth. Certain parameters such as isolating the source of bleeding or checking whether pregnancy dates are right is difficult later on in the pregnancy. Some babies may experience restricted growth. This is called fetal growth restriction or intrauterine growth restriction. Signs that may indicate FGR are changes in the umbilical cord blood flow and reduced amniotic fluid volume. For your benefit, this information and more is available on our website www.chennewomensclinic.com.